Hi everybody, it's Sheila from She Makes Crochet and I'm going to be doing a Felix Blanket Crochet Along. Um, for those of you who may not know or maybe you're just wondering, um, my Felix Blanket is a pattern that I released over the summer. I have written instructions on my blog, shemakescrochet.com. I also have several videos that just kind of walk through certain parts of the blanket but there were still people wanting an actual kind of side-by-side -side crochet from start to finish style of a video and so that's what this is today. Um, so let's get started with supplies. The first thing you'll need is yarn. In my original pattern I made this blanket totally using scraps. You don't have to use scraps if you don't want to. Um, for my first blanket and in this sample blanket I'm using worsted weight yarn. You're welcome to use a lighter or a heavier yarn if that's what you prefer to work with when you make blankets. I'm also using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. You're welcome to scale that hook size up or down with your worsted weight yarn. Um, I deliberately chose a little bit of a smaller hook because I like my C to C stitches to be on the tighter side. So that might be something for you to consider as well. You'll need some scissors, needles for sewing in your yarn tails. And this is something that I did not recommend originally in the pattern, but as I was thinking about a way to make this video a little bit different, um, I had an idea to use stitch markers for a part of the blanket, so potentially you could consider using some of those or just even a scrap of yarn, a bobby pin, something like that. So to get started, um, the first thing we're going to do is make the odd shape, which is this little piece right here. So you will need just your first color of yarn that you plan to use and get your hook ready with a slip knot. And this is where you may want to use the stitch marker. So this little shape that we're making, um, it's not hard, but it's if you're familiar with CTC, it's going to feel really different than anything you've done before. So it can feel confusing and tricky because it's just it kind of goes against what you naturally want to do. Um, so I'll try to work slowly and like I said, get a stitch marker ready if you think you might need that. I think it is a handy tip. So the first thing we're gonna do, um, I call these blocks increase blocks in the pattern and it's just the C to C block where you start by chaining six. So you're kind of creating a block where there's not one before. So chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're gonna work a double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. I like to work my double crochets into the back bump of my chain stitches. And I do that all the time, but you can work into whatever loop you prefer to work into. So this little unit right here, I refer to it as a C to C stitch. It's a little block. And hopefully you can see that there's three double crochets and then you also have this, I call it the chain three loop. It's just those chain stitches that you created um, when we skipped those first three. So this is where if you're using the stitch marker, I recommend you put the stitch marker right in that chain three loop because it'll help you know where to go next. So the next thing we're gonna do to create the odd shape, and this is where it's very different than what you normally do when you C to C, is we're gonna work right back here in this uh, chain three loop that you may have put a stitch marker on. Um, and in order to get there, we're gonna do what I call a decrease. And this is different than probably what you're used to 
Typically with C to C, people tend to make slip stitches. In this pattern, it's really important that you chain three to make your decrease. So we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna work another C to C stitch right here in this chain three loop. So to get there, I like to just turn my work like this and then rotate it up so I can get into that loop that I marked. Slip stitch, and then if you're using a stitch marker, get it out of the way. And now you're ready to make your next C to C block. You do this by chaining three, and then making three double crochets into that same loop that you slip stitched into. So now we're done with row two, and I recommend to put the stitch marker right here into the chain three loop of that last stitch you just made. To start row three, we need to increase. So that means we're going to add another stitch. So this second row, or this, excuse me, this third row that we're going to be working is going to have two stitches. One here and one that we're creating right now. So we're going to create that by chaining six. And then you're going to work a double crochet into the fourth fifth and sixth chain from the hook, just like we did to start. So then the next thing we're going to do is work into this marked stitch. So to get there, you're just going to turn those two stitches at the bottom and then rotate up to slip stitch into the space that you marked or you just mentally kept track of. Remove your stitch marker and then chain three and make three double crochets. And that is the end of row three. And this is where it just looks funny because you have this one little stitch hanging out here, um, but this was from row one, and so we're not gonna work into it. Now we're gonna work row four. So go ahead and mark this stitch right here, which if you're, it's the last one that you just made, it's the chain three loop of the C to C stitch that your hook is still attached to. In order to get into that stitch, we're gonna do a decrease. So row four is just gonna be two stitches, one, two. So to get to here, we're gonna chain three. And then again, we're just gonna rotate our work and move it up to slip stitch into the marked stitch. And then complete your C to C stitch by chaining three and then making three double crochets right here into the same place that you slip stitched. And then you're gonna slip stitch into this next stitch, chain three, and make three double crochets. And that completes row four. Go ahead and again, um, if you're having trouble, I recommend marking the chain three loop of the last C to C stitch you just made, the one that your hook's connected to. To start row five, we're gonna start with an increase. So we're gonna chain six, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're gonna make your double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. So you should have something that looks like this. So the next thing we need to do is work into this stitch and this one here. We're going to get there by turning and then rotating our work up and slip stitching into the marked stitch. Remove your stitch marker and finish your C to C stitch by chaining three and making three double crochets. And then you're gonna finish the row by working one more C to C stitch. So slip stitch into that next one, chain three, and make three double crochets. So at the end of row five, you should have something that looks like this. Go ahead and mark that last chain three loop of the last C to C stitch you just made. And then we're gonna work row six three stitches, one, two, three. So we're gonna start with a decrease, chain three, rotate your work and bring it up to your hook, slip stitch into the marked stitch. Remove the stitch marker and then work your C to C stitch by chaining three and then making three double crochets into the same space. And then we're going to work two more. So slip stitch into this next block, chain three, make three double crochets. Slip stitch into this last space, chain three, make three double crochets. And that's the end of row six. Row seven, before we start, mark this last chain three loop you created. We're gonna work four stitches. So it's gonna start with an increase. So chain six. And make your double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. So you should have something that looks like this. Turn your work, rotate it up, slip stitch into the marked space, and remove your stitch marker. Chain three, and make your three double crochets to complete your next C to C stitch. And so now you have two more stitches to make. So slip stitch into the next space, chain three and make three double crochets. And slip stitch into the last space, chain three and make three double crochets. And that completes row seven, so we have one more row to do. You probably don't need the stitch marker, but um, if you're going to use it, mark that last chain three loop that we just made. And row eight starts with a decrease, so we're just going to do four stitches. So we're just going to chain three and work our last four stitches. So chain three. Turn your work, rotate, 
slip stitch into the marked stitch, remove the stitch marker, and then work your stitch by chaining three and making three double crochets. And then you have three more stitches to make. So go ahead and slip stitch and work your C to C stitches back down. And then there's the, the end of row eight. So you can go ahead and cut your yarn. The next thing you need to do, we're gonna do is build a block off of this shape. So choose your next color. I like to attach my new color, um, in the last yarn over of my last stitch. So I'm going to just remove, and if any of you are very new to crochet, I'm just gonna take out the entire last double crochet. So I have my chain three and two double crochets. I need to make one more to complete the stitch. So I'm just gonna do the first part of the double crochet and stop right here and then just yarn over with my new color and pull through like that. You are welcome to totally fasten off the, the pink and just um, pull up a new color using your preferred method, um, but that's the way I do it. I don't, I tend to not tie a lot of knots or anything like that, but I do weave my ends in really, really well. And I have a video demonstrating how I do that if you are curious. So to get this, um, this next block, just to orient you, this will be the bottom edge of the blanket. Um, so we're gonna start with an increase block and then work stitches all the way up the top. So start with chaining six and then making a double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. So this is really just very similar to what we were doing before. Turn your work and kind of rotate it up to get into that next chain three loop. And then chain three and make your three double crochets. And then continue doing that into these next three stitches up the side of this little pyramid. So when you reach the top, it should look like this. You made five stitches in the new color. And the way that the Felix blanket works is the blocks kind of overlap each other. So we need to extend this block out three more C to C stitches. And the way we do that is a method I'm calling the floating increase. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna chain six. So you should have something that looks like this. And then we're gonna create a loop. The way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna slip stitch 
right into this double crochet stitch. And I like to do this from back to front. So insert your hook into that stitch and yarn over and complete a slip stitch. When you're done, it might look like this. So kind of pull your working yarn up and then you should see you have a little loop like this. And that's what we're gonna use to build your C to C stitch. So chain three, one, two, three, and then we have to make three double crochets. And you're gonna do that by sticking your hook right into this hole. Whoops. So there's one, two, three. And when you're finished, you should have something that looks like this. So now you have six stitches and they're all oriented in the same direction. And this one looks just a little different because it has this bottom loop hanging down. So that's correct if you notice that on yours and you don't need to worry about it. Um, I, again, I'm using kind of a smaller hook for my worsted weight yarn. So this hole is like not even noticeable once my blanket is all fully constructed. But some people in my um, Felix Blanket Crochet group said that it, it worked better for them to chain five so that their hole wasn't quite as big. So that could be something you want to play around with, especially if you have particularly loose tension. So we need to make two more of these floating increases. And for this next one, I'm going to zoom in to give you a closer view. So the first thing you need to do is chain six. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. And you should have something that looks like this. The next thing you need to do is create a loop. And you're going to do that by slip stitching into the top of this double crochet stitch right here. Back to front. And then just yarn over and complete your slip stitch. When you're finished, it might be looking a little like this. So what I do is kind of pull my working yarn up and then you can kind of open that loop up and see it better. So chain three, one, two, three, and then make three double crochet stitches right inside of this loop. So yarn over and go right into the loop and make your three stitches. One, two, three. And it should look like this. Again, you know, it looks just like the other stitches, but it just has this little bottom part. So we need to make one more of those and we'll be done with the first row. So chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Make your loop by slip stitching into this double crochet stitch back to front. Chain three and make your three double crochets into the loop. I'm going to zoom out. And so that's the end of row one. So you should have eight C to C stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we started with a, you know, an increase, we would build a block on top 
and that's not where we want the first block to go. We want it to go on this side. So the way we get to the side is by starting with a decrease. And remember, you must do the decreases by chaining three. I really wanna make sure I emphasize that because you will need this, these little chain three loops we're creating later. So make sure you chain three, one, two, three. And then we need to get into here to work down. So we're just gonna turn our work and kind of rotate up like we've been doing and slip stitch into that space and then work your C to C stitch by chaining three and making three double crochets. And then we're just gonna continue working C to C stitches all the way back down to the bottom. So slip stitch into the next space, chain three, and make your three double crochets. So because we did that decrease at the top, this um, stitch count for the end of this row will be the same as the row we worked up. So we worked up eight stitches, and so we will be working back down eight stitches. So while I'm making these stitches, um, I just wanted to bring to your attention, if you don't know, I know I mentioned my blog. Um, I do have the written pattern there. I also have a blog post called Felix Blanket Tips and Techniques. And I think that's a really neat place um, to go because it has some extra tips. <laughs> One of the things it has is a little um, graph and once you sort of get the hang of this blanket, you might find that the graph is just a really good quick reference for you to see, um, you know, where you need to be to start leveling off the top um, and things like that. Um, so if you find that you started to get the hang of this uh, blanket, you don't always wanna watch the pattern or these videos the next time you work on one, if you're somebody who learns in that kind of a way, your mind works in that kind of a way, that little graph could be really useful to you and a time saver. So now we've done row two, and again, we have eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this time, we wanna keep extending out this bottom part. So we're gonna start our row with an increase, which is where we chain six. So we're gonna build a stitch here, and then we're gonna work on top of the eight we just made. So we will have nine stitches for this third row. So you're gonna start with a chain six. And then make your double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. And then it should look like this. You're just gonna turn and slip stitch and then work your way up into those eight stitches that we made. So you will have a total of nine at the top. So the other thing that is in that tips and techniques blog post is a little coloring sheet. Um, I have a Felix Blanket crochet group and there is um, a person in that group who was so um, generous and kind. She created just a little herringbone document and gave me permission to share it on my blog. So what's neat about it is you could use that document um, to color if you wanted to try to plan out your color placement for this blanket. Um, when I made my first blanket, and even this sample blanket, I guess, I just chose my colors randomly. 
and a lot of people have done you know just scrap busting kind of random color placements with their Felix blankets but some people have made some really neat and really interesting designs just by changing you know kind of deliberately planning where they put their colors by working with a smaller number of color options um, there's a lot of really neat things you can do with this design with your color placement so that could be something you want to check out sometime as well so i reached the top and i'm going to just double check that i have nine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I just want to point point that out because it this stitch right here can be a little tricky because it does have a loop on top of it from where we made our chain three to decrease. And so it can be tempting to want to work another stitch into here. And if you did that, your edge would start going up this way and you wouldn't have that bumpy edge that we're trying to create. So um, until you really get the hang of this blanket, I really recommend you count your um, stitches. So at the top of this row, we wanna just work back down the nine stitches we worked up. So we're gonna start with a chain three and then just work in these same stitches. So we'll have a stitch count of nine when we get to the bottom. So chain three, one, two, three. Turn and rotate your work like usual. Slip stitch, chain three, and make your three double crochets all the way back down for a total of nine C to C stitches. And I think the last thing just to point out on my blog again is you can get links to um, my Facebook, Felix Blanket Facebook group and Ravelry group. Um, the Facebook group is really active. There are a lot of members in there and um, it's a great place if you run into a question, a problem. Um, I'm happy to help answer questions at any time, so please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, but if you post it in that Facebook group, there's almost always somebody there that's willing and able to answer a question pretty immediately. So that's like a really good place to get questions answered quickly. And you could upload a picture so people can see exactly where you're at in the pattern and give you tips. You could also just use the search feature um, because maybe chances are someone has already asked that question and you could find your answer pretty immediately that way as well. And also, it's a really fun place just because people are always posting their um, current work in progress and when they finish. So you're going to want to start by building a block here by chaining six and then working nine more stitches. So you'll have a total of 10 when you get to the top. So chain six. And make your double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. And then just rotate your work and continue making C to C stitches all the way to the top. So a couple other things I just wanted to say was one, I love to see your finished work. So please, if you're somebody who likes to share your work on social media, feel free to tag me, She Makes Crochet, um, because I would love to see your finished blanket or any progress pictures that you take and share. It's probably my favorite part of designing patterns is just seeing the things that other people do with my idea and kind of watch how it grows and um, 
I don't know, it's just really fun for me. So the other thing I want to say is um, I will be kind of fast forwarding my stitching throughout this video um, just to help speed it up. And this pattern gets pretty repetitive, so it's a little long winded right now, but once we kind of get into it more, there'll be a lot of um, me just kind of making something off camera that you guys already know how to make and don't need me to demonstrate. So I think it'll get faster as time goes on. I plan to do this video in three parts just because the blanket is constructed in three parts. And I think that that will allow you um, more flexibility. And I'll explain that on my way back down. So I reached the top. I should have 10 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Again, just be mindful that you don't want to work into this stitch right here. We're going to just decrease and work 10 back down. So start with a chain 3 and work all the way down to the bottom and then we can uh, move on to the next part. So like I said, I'm going to do this in three parts. And the reason is because part one works really well because um, you set up one edge of your blanket. Part two is where you build the middle. And part three is doing the other edge of your blanket. So the middle part is really flexible. If you wanted to do like a baby blanket, you could just totally omit part two and um, just move straight into part three. And I think that that format of three videos would make it easier for you to just get to the part you need. And then part two, you can repeat as many times as you would like. So in my original blanket pattern, I repeated part two, I did it twice. Um, and so again, with that video format, I think it would allow you the flexibility to rewatch part two if you needed to. Um, so I think that It'll just help make it easier for you guys to find the part of the blanket that you need. And then, like I said, at some point, I think for a lot of you, this pattern is just going to kind of click. And when that happens, you might not need the videos at all. And you might just need maybe that little graph that I mentioned on my blog. Or maybe you won't need anything altogether, <laughs> and that's fine too. It's really... Um, it's just a very different kind of a pattern, but it's very repetitive and it is mostly just your typical C to C with a couple of extra, you know, kind of different techniques. But once you learn those, um, I think that it gets really fun for most people. I've had a lot of people make several of these blankets. I'm going to take that stitch out because I split the yarn and I was going to just ignore it. And then I made it back down, and that's the end of that block. We have our six rows, and we ended with our 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can cut and fasten off. And then this piece will be placed aside. And we'll use it in a few minutes. 
Okay, so the last thing to do is to get the little triangle start um, for the panel that we're working on right now. So you're just going to go ahead and choose another color and start with a slip knot on your hook. And we're going to build our first C2C stitch by chaining six. And then working a double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. So this part here is really simple. It is just basic, normal C to C. So you're gonna work six rows so that you have a little six by six triangle at the end. So you can work on ahead if you know how to do that. Um, if you're kind of new to C to C, we'll walk through it. So chain six here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then make another double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. So it looks like this. And then you're just gonna turn, rotate up to make your second stitch, which is the end of row two. So this is part of the reason why that odd shape feels weird is because normally when you're starting out with C to C, your stitch counts, you know, row two has two stitches, row three has three and so on. And the odd shape is not like that. So we're gonna start row three by chaining six. And then working again into the fourth, fifth and sixth chain from the hook. So it should look like this. We're just going to turn it like we've been doing so you can slip stitch. And then you got to make two more C to C stitches so you'll have three at the end. So hopefully you can see one, two, three across the bottom, one, two, three up the top, one, two, three on the diagonal. We're going to keep doing that for three more rows. So at the end, you'll have a total of six. So chain six and work your C to C stitches back down. You'll have four at the end of this row. So I completed row four, and now I'm going to work row five. I'm going to start with chaining six, hopefully this kind of helps you because I don't know my terminology with increase and decrease. I didn't really know how to describe that when I wrote out my pattern. But hopefully this, just kind of watching this, helps you to understand where my head was at with that. Because each time we do that chain six, we add another block to our stitch count. So that is why I called that an increase in the pattern.
and I've reached the end of row five. So I've got one more to do. So one more increase, chain six, and work the C to C stitches back down. And then you will be done with this color. Okay, so I've finished my six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can cut. Choose your next color. And again, um, I like to attach my new color on that final yarn over so I just removed that if you're very new to um, crochet you could just take out the entire double crochet stitch so I only have two left here so I'll start my third one stop it at this point here with two loops on the hook do my final yarn over with the new color and then that's all I do. And then I weave my end in really well. And again, I have a video showing how I do that if you are doubting that you will weave it in good enough. Um, so we're going to make four more rows, just like we did with this purple, um, except when you get to the end of the fourth row, stop one stitch short. So stop here if you wanna go ahead and work faster than me. So I'm going to chain six and then make my C to C stitches down. If you are left-handed, the first thing I should say is I'm not left-handed and I don't know anything about left-handed crochet, but like I've mentioned before, my um, Felix Blanket crochet group is really big and there are a lot of left-handed crocheters in that group. So I have learned from just observing their questions and things as they come up in the group that, you know, basically you're gonna make this blanket exactly like I'm making mine, but your blanket will be the mirror image. So this will become a little bit more clear in a couple of minutes when we finish this part we're on here. But um, 
For us right-handed crocheters, we are working on the right straight edge of our blanket. And if you are a left-handed crocheter, you will be working on your left straight edge of your blanket. Um, you'll follow all of the directions like I'm doing mine, but your blanket, like I said, will be the mirror image. And if you wanted to double check your work, you could just turn your work over and then it should look exactly like mine. When this blanket is finished, there is no right or wrong side to it, but for the purposes of working on it, I tend to refer to um, a right or a wrong side in the pattern um, just to help you with orienting where that straight edge should be. Um, but like I said, once it's all finished, it's totally reversible and you wouldn't be able to tell a left-handed person made the blanket. It, it wouldn't, you know, it would look just like mine. So I hope that that helps if you had any kind of lingering questions or you have a question develop later on. And I will try periodically to just flip my work over so you can see the mirrored image, which should look like what yours is, if that makes sense. And then of course, feel free to join the Facebook group and search the questions or post a question if you have one. And a left-handed person could probably help you better than I can. Oh, just kidding guys I remember um, there was one more thing I wanted to say and this is probably a little dorky for saying but um, I'm pretty new to editing videos and doing like I normally do my videos in one take <laughs> um, and obviously this one is not done in one take and I made a really grave mistake I had completed all of the part one video and had it edited and then like a dork, I went to delete stuff from my phone to, I don't know, make more space and keep it clean. And so I deleted, luckily not all, but some of the videos that I used, um, some of the clips, you know, to make my part one video. And then who does this? I never do this, but I then went into my trash can and I deleted you know, all of the clips from my trash. So they are like totally permanently removed from my phone. And then luckily I realized my mistake. Um, so a bunch of clips from my part one video got deleted and so I've, I have to redo them. So I'm doing them out of sequence. Um, so if you noticed, if you're really like listening carefully to me and um, you know, you hear me say something like, like I said yesterday, and maybe I didn't say it yesterday. I'm not crazy. <laughs> That's why. Um, I just deleted what I said yesterday. And then significantly later in time, had to go back and recreate it. So that is, uh, powerful lesson I learned and I will definitely not be making that mistake again. <laughs> so I'm on my row four and I'm going to stop one stitch before the end. Okay, I'm working my 
second to last stitch and then I'm going to stop and I recommend you stop right here too. And then you will need that other piece that we made and set aside. So the next thing we need to do, and this is kind of if you were listening to my left-handed speech, this is what I was talking about. So this is what we're making for our blanket. The right edge, the bottom edge, the left edge. That's how I um, phrased it in my pattern. But I'll also try to use terms like the straight edge and the unfinished edge, because that might work better for left-handed people. Um, so a left-handed person, yours would be like this, you know, with your straight edge here and your unfinished edge here. But everything else you're doing should be exactly the same as me. So the, um, the next thing we have to do is get this piece well, there's two things. So we have to we have to complete our last stitch in this little space right here. And then we also, when we compete, complete that last stitch, we want it to be joined to here. So we're gonna do that simultaneously. So we're gonna connect while we're making the last stitch. So I'm gonna zoom in to help you guys be able to see. So the first thing that needs to happen is I need to start my last C to C stitch. So I'm going to work into that chain three loop like always. I'll slip stitch and chain three. Now I've started my C to C stitch and I want to connect this stitch that I'm building to the two corners of this blue stitch. So the next thing I'm going to do is slip stitch over here and I want to aim for it to be at this corner. So what I do is just come right into this chain three loop and make a slip stitch. Now I've started my last C to C stitch and it's anchored to the blue stitch at that shared corner. So from there, I'm going to finish my C to C stitch by making three double crochets into the usual space. So the same space that I did my chain three to start the stitch. So now I've completed that last C to C stitch, but they're still not connected. So I need to make one more slip stitch. And again, I want to aim for it to be at this corner down here. So what I do is I'm going to slip stitch into my double crochet right there that last one and now you have the last stitches made and they're joined together so the next thing to do is um, like I said earlier we need to work six rows so we've got to work six more rows we don't need to build a stitch right here because this blue one is there. So we need to get up into here. So the way we do that, you can think of it as decreasing like we've been doing, you know? Like we don't want to build here. We want to just get into this side. So we're just going to chain three and slip stitch. Um, or you can, you know, if that, if that way doesn't work for you to think about it that way, that's fine. Um, we're just going to chain three. And now I have the length I need if I drape this over my stitch so that I can reach to slip stitch into here. So make your chain three, and then I actually like to turn my work before I slip stitch. So that's what I'm doing right now. 
So there's my chain three. And I turned my work. So now the chain three is behind me. And I'm just gonna slip stitch into that loop of this yellow stitch so I can chain three and make three double crochets. I'm gonna zoom out. So now we've completed the first stitch right up here and then we're just gonna finish working all the way up to the top just doing the usual C to C. And I've reached the top of my fifth row. One, two, three, four, five. And I should have 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So for the final row, we are gonna do an increase to build a stitch right here. And then we're gonna come back down. And we should have 11. So I chain six to make my first C to C stitch. I'm going to turn. And work um, back down. And I will stop at the second to last stitch so that I can zoom in on the join again if you guys need to see that. So I'm at my second to last stitch and I need to do the very last one right here into this yellow stitch. And when I make it, I want to join it into this blue one here. It's going to be the exact same process that I did down below, but I will zoom in again in case you guys need to see it up close again. So you're going to start off just like you would make any C to C stitch by slip stitching and chaining three. And then we wanna connect it to the blue by slip stitching into the chain three space. Now we wanna finish the C to C stitch by making three double crochets. And 
And then we want to finish connecting by slip stitching. And you can just go right into this double crochet stitch here. And that is our sixth row. Oops, let me zoom out. One, two, three, four, five, six, so we can fasten off. If you needed to make another row, this is where you would chain three, turn your work and slip stitch up here to continue working up again. So I think by this point, we've gone over all of the really kind of unusual aspects of this blanket. And the next thing we're gonna do is start the repeating blocks to get your blanket the length that you would like.